Dog Works Radio is sponsored by Alaska Dog Works. Check out their website at alaskadogworks.com. Start your day tomorrow with the Daily Dog with Michelle Forto, the morning podcast on Dog Works Radio. Apple podcast reviewer Patty Christensen calls it funny, smart, and filled with all the info I want to know about dogs. I love this show. Wake up with the Daily Dog, available on Dog Works Radio on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your shows. You are listening to The Daily Dog with your host, Michelle Forto. The Daily Dog offers training advice, tips and tricks, and maybe even a book or movie review, too. Hello and welcome, everybody. It's The Daily Dog with Michelle Forto. Remember, we are sponsored by Alaska Dog Works. Today's tip of the day is actually going to be a trick. Encourage your dog to go after the item if you want him to fetch. When he grabs it, reward him with his motivator of choice. Then take the object away. Repeat this a few times, then toss the object a short distance. When he goes for it, immediately reward him again. I also like to use fetch as a way to enforce obedience commands like come when called, sit, wait, Stay, take it, and give. Fetch is a great game to incorporate not only obedience, but interaction between you and your dog and building the trust relationship. The next segment is our topic of the day. And today we're going to be discussing obesity in pets. Statistics show that more and more Americans are overweight. And because our lifestyles also affect our pets, Obesity in pets has risen drastically in the last few years, as well as the same health problems that shadow overweight people also apply to pets. Diabetes, heart disease, liver disease, joint and spinal problems. In a few cases, as with a hypoactive thyroid condition, the disease may be responsible for excess weight. The solution is the same. The only way to lose weight is to eat less and exercise more. Always talk to your veterinarian before placing your pet on a diet and exercise program. The major pet food manufacturers in the United States spend thousands of dollars to formulate foods that are healthy and nutritious. Many companies offer life stage based foods specifically for young animals, active pets, or senior adult pets. Unfortunately, we often destroy the balance of these foods by adding table scraps or lots of snacks, or simply by not following the instructions on the back of the bag. Think of dog biscuits and treats as junk food. They are the potato chips and cookies of the pet world. An occasional treat is fine, but not so much as to be a major part of the pet's diet. Measure the amount of food you feed your pet. Many dog food companies will list recommended feeding amounts on the bags, but these may be too high for your pet. In general, feed one cup of dry food for one 16-ounce can of food for every 20 pounds of body weight per day. It may be in divided meals. Smaller, more frequent meals may keep your pet satisfied, even though the total amount of food is less. Buy a premium food if possible. The producers of name brand foods usually have invested more money in quality ingredients and research. Store brands may not be of equal quality. In general, a quality dry food or canned food is better than the prepackaged moist foods. These foods often contain a lot of salt, sugar, and dye. They taste great, just like junk food, but may not provide the level of nutrition your pet needs for a healthy life. Exercise your pet. It can be as simple as a walk around the block. Start slowly with overweight pets and increase the pace and distance gradually. Playing in the backyard can also be a fun way to burn calories. Throwing a ball, frisbee, or stick for your dog will encourage running and retrieving, if your dog is so inclined. During summer months, many dogs like to swim, and this is a good form of exercise for obese pets. Water helps reduce the strain on joints and provides buoyancy. 
Exercise should be done regularly, not hit or miss, or only on weekends. As with people, tolerance for exercise and an increase in the body's metabolic rate occurs only with regular activity. An occasional walk is good, but not enough to qualify as an exercise plan. Have your pet examined by your veterinarian. Weigh your pet in regularly and chart the progress you are making. If no weight loss occurs after diet modifications and exercise plans have been established, then your veterinarian may want to run some blood tests to check your pet's health. That concludes our topic of the day. I hope that your pet and you are healthy as well. On to the breed of the day. Cardigan Welsh Corgi. The Cardigan Welsh Corgi, the Corgi with the tail, is the older of the two Corgi breeds and one of the earliest breeds of the British Isles. In the beginning, the Corgi came to the high country now known as Cardigan Shire with the tall, tawny-headed Celts from Central Europe. The migration of this warrior tribe to Wales is placed roughly at about 1200 B.C., which means that the corgi has been known in the land of its origin for more than 3,000 years. The dog was a member of the same family that has produced the Dotson. The occupation which made the corgi worth his weight in gold to those Welsh hillmen came at a much later period, but still hundreds of years ago. This was when the crown owned practically all land and the tenant farmers or crofters were permitted to fence off only a few acres surrounding their dooryard. The rest was open country known as common land, on which the crofter was permitted to graze his cattle, one of the chief sources of his meager income. It can be imagined that there was great competition among the crofters to secure as much as possible of this pasture land for their own uses, and the task would have been difficult had it not been for the corgi. The little dog which had been with his Celtic people so long and which had come to be of almost human intelligence was trained to perform a service the opposite of that done by the herding dog. Instead of herding the cattle, the corgi would nip at their heels and drive them as far afield as desired. Often the crofter called upon his dog to clear his ground of the neighbor's cattle. The dog worked the same way in either case. The crofter would stand by his gate and give a soft whistle to, of two notes, one high, one low. Many times the dog could not see the cattle. He was too chase, but he would keep going as long as he could hear that whistle. His speed was remarkable. 
considering his short legs with their outturned feet, but the length of his back gave him added spring. When the dog had scattered the cattle by biting their hawks, avoiding death only by ducking close to the ground when they kicked, the crafter would give this recall signal. A shrill, long, drawn-out whistle made by placing the fingers in the mouth. The dog would return at once. General Appearance Low set with moderately heavy bone and deep chest. Overall silhouette long in proportion to height, culminating in a low tail set and fox-like brush. General Impression A handsome, powerful, small dog capable of both speed and endurance. Intelligent, sturdily built, but not coarse. Temperament. Even-tempered, loyal, affectionate, and adaptable. Never shy and not vicious. I personally think the Corgi is one of the best family dogs that you can have. Let me know what you think of a Corgi. Thanks for listening. Did you know that Alaska Dog Works trains service dogs for those in need throughout North America? Each and every service dog that is trained through the Lead Dog Service Dog Program and Michelle Ford, a winner team, has an individual training plan. We train for autistic, mobility, psychiatric, and PTSD for our soldiers for service work. If you know of someone that may need a service dog, please take a moment and check out Alaska Dog Works on social media and at alaskadogworks.com. Hi guys, it's Alex. If you are a fan of sled dog sports and the Iditarod, Mushing Radio is the show for you. Each Wednesday, we drop a new episode on Dog Works Radio. So be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts from. If you like our podcast, there are a few things you can do. You can take a couple of minutes and go to Apple Podcasts and leave us a five-star review. You can also check out all of our DogWorks Radio sponsors and promotions in our show notes. Another thing you can do is go over to Facebook, like our Facebook page, and one last thing, please tell all of your friends by spreading the word about DogWorks Radio. Thank you so much for listening to us. We really appreciate you. DogWorks Radio is produced by Robert Forto. Logo art by Angry Squirrel Studios. DogWorks Radio is produced in conjunction with KVRF 89.7 in Palmer, Alaska. For dog training advice, you can contact Alaska DogWorks at 907-841-1686 or visit their website at alaskadogworks.com. If you have a show idea or would like to be a guest, please contact us by sending an email to live at dogworksradio.com.